Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is video number 11 in our series on Nerd Dice, making a Ruby gem. Uh, in this video, we might not actually commit any code. We're going to talk some about pseudo-random number generation in Ruby. So um, I've got this issue here. Using standard rand to roll dice uh, makes dice rolls too predictable. So um, the what I've been doing as I've gone through is just doing some experimentation and um, benchmarking to try to see kind of some comparisons between some of the different options that we have available in terms of speed versus uh, keeping the um, the randomness as uh, random as possible. So uh, the reason why you use the word pseudo random number generation in Ruby is that uh, if you do know the seed, the numbers that are generated by a random call are not so random after all. So if I go into my console here and I just do random dot rand 10,000. get this this back I'm gonna reset the seed and it will give me back so if you know the seed I mean this is a very large number so um, unless you, you've got um, you're broadcasting it to somebody they're, they're not likely to know this it's it's operating system dependent and um, but but it's very large but now if I do random dot s rand with this value that I just got back which was my seed Nine three four zero. So out of ten thousand, thirty-three forty-eight, thirty-eight forty-eight, forty-five thirty-seven, ninety-four fifty-five. What are the odds that if we set the seed to that again, that we roll the same four values in a row out of ten thousand? All those odds are exactly one. So if we're coming out of this with a known seed, the sequence of randomly generated numbers is going to be uh, the same each time. And it should be noted that if we do this to the rand to the random um, item and reset the seed, both random dot rand and kernel dot rand. use the same random seed. So you can see we're getting the same numbers in the same sequence um, when you call the, make a call with uh, the kernel.rand or random.rand. Uh, they're, they're both sharing the same seed. So uh, when, you, when you're using random number generation if somebody does know the seed, they're going to be able to uh, be able to um, predict what the um, the upcoming rolls are. And even if we go here, so let's let's do a couple more just so that we have an idea of what we're going to get. So uh, if I go and reset that seed again. And I have an array here, two, four, six, oh, one, dot shuffle. It'll shuffle that, which uses kernel.rand or random.rand to do that. And then if I make my next call, 
it'll pick up wherever in the sequence we had after the, um, the, the, the random numbers we needed in order to, um, to shuffle the array. So I bet it's going to be 288. Oh, look at that. So that's what we, we get there. So uh, there are a couple ways that you can um, kind of hedge against this. Again, it, it, unless you've got a pretty uh, crafty and malicious person, they're not going to be able to exploit um, this. No, nobody, unless they are um, have all of the... <laughs> Nobody's going to look at this seed and say, hey, I know that for the first time you roll Rand 1000 on it, it's going to come up with uh, 9455 or whatever. That you're just not going to, people aren't going to do that. Um, but just to uh, make things a bit more secure than your normal seed, so you can use, for one thing, random.new. So random.new, and if you call ten thousand here. So I'm getting different numbers here. If I go back and reset the, the main random seed, this generator has its own seed. So we've got here now if I do gen.rand, so we're still getting numbers that we're not expecting. Now I'll go back right back and do random.rand. That generator didn't move our um, didn't move our uh, our seed forward at all uh, when we called items there. So um, what we're going to wind up at least allowing. Um, so the other thing that w I uh, looked at is the, the speed of these relative things. So when you just call rand, well, let's reset our seed again. So what is just rand using? Um, when you're just using RAND, you can see it's still using that same seed. And when we looked at our benchmark, um, just normal kind of in your command line RAND is um, significantly slower than random.rand or kernel.rand, um, about t twice as slow. Uh, and the reason for that is because it's not uh, when you call random.rand it's it's hitting it right on that module um, without having to go up the stack so if you look at main uh, self here self is main self.class is object self.class dot included modules is kernel. So when you do rand 1000, what it's going to do uses uh, Ruby's method missing um, framework. Um, so it's going to say, does object have, uh, d does main have uh, rand defined? No, it doesn't. All right, well, we'll go up, up the inheritance tree and see whether um, object does well, does object have it itself? No. Does object have it in its included mod modules? Um, and then what are the, those in kernel, included modules? Kernel is one of them. Does that respond to RAND? Yes, it does. And we'll respond and give you the value. Uh, and if you do it 5 million times, um, it, it doesn't remember <laughs> what you just did with it. So every single time, uh, every single one of those 5 million iterations, you're going through and you're saying, 
when you call Rand, does Rand does Rand exist on on this object? No. All right. Does it exist on a, on its class? Um, does it exist on its included module? So it's it's making that uh, that trip every time. So um, you definitely, if you, it, it, I mean, uh, and we're talking half a second for five million round trips versus one point one seconds. So overall, it's a it's a fast um, system call. But uh, if you're going to do this, it doesn't make sense for you to to do that every time. You might as well um, use random dot rand or kernel dot rand. Um, and when, when you make your calls there. So uh, that has implications for how we just did our our readme here. So um, I'm going to go in and actually um, make changes to those uh, items. And I think I'm also going to um, apply the new random interval to um, to any um, to, to both both the whether you choose um, secure random or um, random not new or whatnot that it would um, do that. So um, that's one one other thing that we should probably include in our review of random generation. So uh, we would need to require. what happens when we set we set the seed here what happens with secure random dot rand These numbers do not look familiar. I've been kind of doing this on the fly. So that's got a SRAND is private for the secure random module. So secure random doesn't expose any of its seed information in public methods at least. Can look at instance variables. It doesn't expose a seed as a as an instance variable, or um, have have that um, provided as part of the interface for somebody to um, be able to to set, which um, is more secure and probably the um, rationale behind the name of it. Uh, it is, if you look at the, uh, the benchmarking we were doing in that issue, 
significantly slower than the alternatives. So um, we're talking um, about an order of magnitude slower than uh, the, the slower normal RAND um, version there. So it, it does add up um, when you when you make calls to secure random, I mean again it's five million times in ten seconds, so it's not if you're uh, doing something like we are where we're we're just rolling polyhedral dice, it's not going to um, have a human noticeable impact on performance, but we will as we go forward. Um, redo a little bit of this configuration when we go to try to solve for that uh, that story here. So we'll uh, we'll keep secure random. We will um, if we do rand here, we'll either um, just note that it's we're going to it's going to delegate to uh, to random dot rand the class method, uh, and then I think um, the. Uh, the random new once and the random new interval, we may um, combine those into one, and then just uh, have the the new random interval um, be the case that when it's when it reaches whatever that configured value it is, it will uh, reset the seed for the class method and it will um, reset the um, the new if you've got say if you're using random as your technique otherwise you would only uh, you wouldn't need to do it in all cases so that is our overview of random pseudo random number generation in ruby and in our next video we'll get into actually uh, implementing some of those uh, configuration items we set in our last video Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.